Welcome to lesson 16 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 6 in the section on parameters of positive displacement pumps. In this lesson, we will talk about cavitation. Now, what is cavitation? Cavitation is a phenomenon in which rapid changes of pressure in a liquid lead to the formation of small vapor-filled cavities in places where the pressure is relatively low. Now, on the pumps inlet sides in hydraulic pumps, we have excessive vacuum conditions on the supply side. And that's where cavitation or vapor bubbles are formed and they collapse when they reach a point of higher pressure. We're going to see how that functions in a bit. So high vacuum creates vapor bubbles within the oil which are carried to the discharge pressure side of the pump and these bubbles collapse in this fashion and they create a supersonic fluid microjet that damages the inner components of our pump. So cavitation damage, surface erosion. Now this does not happen with one bubble imploding. Cavitation is something that happens over time and these microjets they start to crack on the surface and within a year of using a pump that has cavitation bubbles in it you can see the damage on the components. Now in this picture right here we can see cavitation damage on an axial piston pump. Now the first reason for pump failure is contamination but the second leading cause of pump failure behind contamination is actually cavitation. Now Cavitation results in excessive heat, violent implosions of the vapor bubbles as we saw, reduced lubrication because we have oil that loses its viscosity and loses its lubrication characteristics, and friction and of course wear. Cavitation is a condition that can also potentially damage or compromise your hydraulic system. So for this reason, understanding cavitation, its symptoms and methods of prevention are critical to the efficiency and overall health of not just your hydraulic pump but your entire hydraulic system. Now if you remember Hydraulics 101 when we talked about the hydraulic system chain so we had the electric motor supplying the mechanical input energy to a pump and we had the hydraulic motor we had control components right here and we had the hydraulic motor and then on the output side we had mechanical output power. Now one of the first components in our hydraulic system chain is the pump, which has the main objective of pushing out flow to a place where there is resistance of flow in order to build up pressure. On the inlet sides of pumps we have vacuum because the pump is sucking the fluid in and on the outlet side we have an area with larger pressures. Now on this picture right here on the left side we can see a gear pump that has a sufficient enough pressure on the inlet side so we don't have the formation of vapor bubbles. We don't have cavitation. Now if you look the pump on the right side we can see that vapor bubbles are forming due to vacuum, due to pressure on the inlet side being too low. Now we're going to use the phase diagram for water because everyone knows that water at a constant pressure of one bar evaporates at 100 degrees Celsius, right? And turns into ice when we go below zero Celsius. Now, the thing is, if we keep the temperature at a constant, for example, at let's say um, if this is zero, this is 100, let's say we are keeping it at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, if we're keeping temperature at a constant, we can still vaporize this water if we make the pressure low enough. So if we go below this region, if we go below this line. Now, this is exactly what happens with oil on the inlet side. The pressure goes into vapor pressure territory, vapor bubbles form, and we have a problem. So one of the main factors that contribute to cavitation is poor plumbing, flow restrictions, and high oil viscosity. And there are usually pressure gauges that we put on the inlet of the pump so we don't get into vacuum territory because if the pressure is really low on the inlet side, 
we have the formation of the vapor bubbles, which later burst and damage our components. Here we can see a picture and we can see what happened to a certain gear pump that had cavitation. You can see that a big chunk of metal was damaged here and this is not something that happens in a second. Cavitation is something that damages your components over time. So here we can see the vapor bubble and when it gets into a place of higher pressure we have the initiation of the bubble collapsing. So it's collapsing in itself as you can see here and there we have the formation of the liquid microjet which hits our components and damages our pumps. So how can we prevent cavitation? The pressure on the inlet side should be bigger than the minimum allowed pressure. So the pressure on the inlet side has to be bigger than the allowed pressure. And the allowed pressure is usually the pressure below which we have the formation of the vapor bubbles. Now, as we said, we can put a vacuum gauge on the inlet side. We can have the work fluid working at the proper viscosity and we can do a good job of designing the plumbing system of our hydraulic system. Now let's take a look at this video that shows us how cavitation actually looks like inside a gear pump. Now you're going to see the bubbles forming. Also, the speed of the pump is a big factor for cavitation. Ways to know if you have cavitation happening in your system is, for example, the sound. Uh, it has a very specific sound of debris rolling around in your pump, or you can imagine the sound being like having tiny rocks in your system just tumbling around. And uh, another sign you may be experiencing cavitation is actual physical evidence. So as part of your general maintenance, you should be inspecting and replacing the hydraulic oil filters elements at regular intervals based on the duty cycle of the application, how often it is used. If at any time during the inspection and replacement of these elements, uh, for example, the filter, you find metallic debris, it could be a sign that you're experiencing cavitation in the pump. So the easiest way to determine the health of your hydraulic circuit is to check the filter. Every system should have a hydraulic oil filter somewhere in line. Now, if you already determined the, the pump to be damaged, you should remove the filter element, cut it open and inspect it. If you find a lot of metal, you'll need to flush the entire system and keep an eye on other components that may be compromised as a result. And once cavitation has been detected within the hydraulic pump, you'll need to determine the exact cause of cavitation. If you don't, cavitation can result in pump failure and compromise additional components, potentially costing you your entire hydraulic system. Thank you for listening and for being focused. This is it for cavitation. See you in the next lesson where we will be talking about hydraulic pump characteristics.